Hello people, welcome Poland. Today we will be talking about products and I hope you are really, really, if you are doing your application. Um, so, uh, to start, just for you to know who is talking, of course, uh, the facets of today, we will start with amazing OGX. Um, so, we'll have um, my pretty, pretty partner, Paula, uh, that is MCVP OGV. And my name is Daniela, I'm your MCVP OG and OGD. So, um, of course, we are OGX and you know that already, or maybe you don't, but let's see what we are going to talk about today. So, to start, uh, one, we're going to talk about our products and let's say our products as OGX, like what are they, what's the value proposition of them, uh, the why of the products and for you to have the general understanding uh, of why do they exist. Um, the second one will be history. So history of starting with OG and OGT in Poland, uh, how it was uh, working for at least the past three terms, and also a history of OGV. So you can see general, let's say, numbers too of what has been achieved in the past terms. The other, and of course, after history comes the current state and the future state. Uh, so what's the current state of the products and especially like what's our vision uh, as uh, this MC term and what are we planning for the products? Um, the fourth thing will be like you as LCPs or yeah, as LCPs, how you can work with OGX and um, what are the things that you can take into consideration for your application uh, so you can check um, maybe uh, what are the key steps for your LC to take in each product, uh, where can be like new opportunities or in general what do you have to take. And of course we'll have like some questions time so if you have any question, uh, you can send it uh, via Facebook and for the ones that are watching live, and that's pretty much it. So let's start talking about the products. So Global Talent is a product that was the first product of ISEC in general. Like this is literally how ISEC started uh, doing professional internships. Uh, so at the end, Global Talent is a professional experience abroad. Uh, it's an experience that can go from six weeks to 12 months um, being a, an intern in another country. Um, in terms of paid, like at the end, you have a scholarship that is given when you are uh, being an intern in another country and in another company. It's usually made in companies, but also in some schools can be uh, happening. And right now, um, let's say for this um, year, we will be working uh, with key partners. So for Europe, we'll have Hungary that we have worked with for with them, Germany as well. There's like history between um, the two entities in ISEC. Norway that uh, specifically for IT, they have a lot of opportunities and UK also for IT. So um, these are the entities that you can take into consideration in the terms of Americas, that is our um, second, uh, a region that we work the most is Canada, specifically for IT too, and some BA. Um, Mexico, you can take some opportunities too for BA and marketing, and Brazil, uh, it's mostly running all the sub products. Um, in terms of the timeline, so um, taking into consideration the beginning of the year, uh, the opens start happening from January till let's say March as focus. Uh, then we'll have approvals um, from March to May, the last ones happening in June. And uh, also like in terms of realizations, of course we have the winter ones that uh, will happen during January, February, and the summer ones um, that happen starting from June also to till September. Um, finished, well, uh, of course, uh, after every realization peak, there comes like the finished ones and complete is obviously happening like continuously. In terms of summer, uh, our biggest peak for opens is from August to October. 
uh, terms of approvals, we have a little, let's say, peak in August because of the people going out of uh, university and actually focusing on the program and realizations. That's why we also have like till June to September. So this is how like the the product is um, behaving uh, in our entity. In terms of global talent, the past years. So uh, Global Talent is a product that we use to master a lot more, but right now it's a product, product that has been dropping. And uh, well, one is maybe because we have to align much more our attraction. Uh, right now, um, Global Talent has been um, more specific in terms that we can now uh, promote to products, not just the product itself. And opportunities, uh, for example, for Polish, there are a lot of opportunities around the world just for Polish speakers, and we have to take care of this. But if we just see, like, the let's say the numbers of the past years, uh, we can see that in signups in, in from 16, 17, we used to have uh, 2,000, almost 3,000 um, one term ago. Um, we were running around 1,700, and this past of the term was um, 1,400. Um, in terms of applicants, we still have a lot of applicants, and so that's good. And I think, like, if we can see, like, the conversion that we have to work the most is from applicants to accepted. Uh, because if we see, like, there's no big difference from 2016 to our nowadays reality in terms of applicants. But in terms of how they are getting accepted, there's a big difference. From accepted to approved is not... Um, an issue either let's say like most of the the people that get accepted actually get approved and go to their opportunity so what we have to focus a lot is in the um in the part of getting the right people to our opportunities and actually what we are uh, selling to them in terms of global entrepreneur, so this product is the newest product of whole ISEC. It was created after uh, seeing this trend on um, the world of the entrepreneurship and how it has been evolving and growing a lot in the past uh, years. So we have been running this product for four years. Uh, this product uh, is experiences mainly in startups in the world, and it is running from six to 12 weeks. It's a product that you don't have a scholarship, or most of them don't have. Some uh, opportunities have, an, uh, let's say, a little help. And yeah, it's running in startups mainly. Um, the cool thing about this product is like, um, because of the duration, they can have this experience during holidays, but it's also more focused on their background and uh, the professional experience. Um, and with Europe, we will be working with Turkey that has really good opportunities in almost all the fields, uh, Romania and Greece. While in Americas, we started to work with Brazil this year and it has been like a, a huge um, partner. So uh, we will keep working with uh, Brazil. In terms of the timeline, so uh, it's mostly looking really alike. The only thing that changes is that maybe we are not having this peak in August for approvals because people is going mostly in their uh, holidays. So the, let's say it's a um, really general timeline that is aligned to their university um, calendar too. So in terms of global entrepreneur, we cannot say that we are growing or dropping. It's more like a stagnation. And I believe it's due to like we haven't focused on the product. So it's just organically uh, going. And we need to explore much more uh, about the product and what can be the value proposition for Polish youth itself. Um, if we can say like signups, we have growth, like, yeah, uh, but we are still needing, um, if not signups, maybe the conversion from signups to applicant is the thing that we are lacking the most. Uh, 
Uh, because after that, like uh, also the applicants to accept it, we could um, get much better. And if you see like accepted to approve, it's a really, really good conversion. So at the end, we are also lacking this part of how are we selling. Uh, but in Global Entrepreneur, it's more general uh, on how, what is the value proposition of the product itself. Um, because I think for Global Talent, we have it really clear of what's the value proposition. So you may ask like, okay, these are the general things about the products. Now, how can I work or how is the MC planning to work? So uh, this is my general vision. Uh, why I didn't do like two slides or different slides? Uh, it's because mainly I plan three strategies that I will be working for both products in different things. So SOP implementation is something that we have to focus a lot you know, for both products, just in different phases. Uh, in OGT, we are more in the phase of customer management. Uh, so how are we managing our customers? And uh, actually, like we have a lot, a lot of signups. How can we get them to actually be applicants and accepted? And in the terms of OGEs, it's more of how are we selling our product? In rocking IR, so we are lacking IR for both products, uh, but mainly they can be you. Um, yeah, like we can have IR in different forms. Uh, so for GT, it's mostly aligning sub-products with entities that we can work with. So knowing, okay, for example, for IT, I can go to this entity. Um, while for GE, it's more about product packaging as we did for Impact Brazil, that is having a really a specific uh, education and materials um, about the entity itself and the product in general because it's running uh, really similar in all the LCs in Brazil. The third thing that we are working with is virtual markets. So in which sense? So we already saw the results of the previous years. Uh, but also a reality is that four years ago we were running these products uh, in more than 10 LCs. Uh, so it's not that we don't we cannot have the same um, let's say results with less LCs, but at the end we are closing the market to just the LCs that we are running the products. So that's why we will do some changes in terms of attraction and registration, like some basic stuff, but actually uh, trying to explore more our mar markets and have data on which cities may have like potential for these two products or just for one of them, like it can happen too. And this takes me on 2020. Uh, so like how actually the LCPs 2020 can work with these uh, two products. So one for me, and that is like uh, really essential is choosing a focus product. So either it's OG or it is OGT based on data, on the understanding of the products, on a lot of factors uh, you have to know like for a product to grow and to grow uh, in a like according to a growth path uh, it's better to focus on one so um, either if you are thinking of uh, opening uh, this product for your LC just focus on one focus on doing plans for one or either if you already are running these uh, these products uh, also try to put a focus product because at the end this is how we are going to grow uh, at least in one uh, so products so the other thing and mainly for OGT is starting to focus on some products right now we have done a lot of general attraction but now we have to focus on what are we actually selling and maybe we don't have architecture opportunities so let's not uh, pretend that we have, but actually know what are, are the <laughs> products and the kind of opportunities that we can offer to our customers. The third one is a strategic IR. So not trying to cooperate with the whole world if we don't have the profiles to go to the whole world. So like actually knowing the sort of products that uh, we can run for our market, uh, we can also choose the IR that we can work the most. And this could actually take us to grow too with our partners and having um, also our structures and our members um, knowing a lot the reality of the other entity and how to run it. And the last thing is the future thinking. So as I was saying, even for the LCs that don't have the product right now, 
a lot of you had it in the past and it's something that you have to actually see the data and consider itself uh like gt is, is the product that i started with and that still we have a lot of signups from different cities that are not running the products and that we are reallocating but at the end you can see the opportunities of growing one of these products and also because these products um, are really sustainable itself so you don't have to take like that many risks it's much more on capacity building um, of your LC and wanting to run one of these products if you see the possibility in your market and especially the necessity of your customers. So basically that's, um, let's say, the general uh, for OG and OGT. Of course, I'm always available. And if you have any questions, uh, you can always approach me. Um, I don't know if you have any questions now. Uh, if not, we will continue with uh, TV, I guess. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Let's start with our amazing uh, OGV. Uh, sorry for the slides, we will go back. Uh, just for you to recap what was happening a minute ago, you can think about some questions. And uh, in the meantime, I will start uh, talking about OGV. So, uh, I hope that you already know uh, OGV uh, is uh, our amazing focus product from this year. And what is it really about? The main value proposition of GV is to, the, to develop yourself and uh, contribute to the sustainable development um, goals, which of course it's something that as Isaac uh, we do because we want to make sure that we uh, contribute to the uh, to what the world needs around us. And the product uh, is from six to twelve weeks, and it's of course not paid. Your experience is usually uh, you work in an NGO or in a school. Uh, depending on the on the project you go to. When it comes to the uh, timeline, <clears throat> so uh, as now August already started, we started our uh, attraction peak, our sign-ups peak, uh, and uh, it will last until uh, the end of October. Then our approvals peak uh, is going to so conversion peak uh, to make sure that all the customers that signed up uh, in this part will have a chance to go for an experience. This part uh, is starting in September, ending in November while taking into consideration that October and especially November are the biggest week. Why? Because simply this is the time when most of the people have their opportunities open and most of the opportunities to, like the, the, the biggest amount of opportunities is available. And then uh, December, January, uh, this is our uh, peak of realization. So all the hard work we were doing for the uh, previous months is going to pay off by an amazing experience during this time. At the same time, in January, we already start thinking about summer and what is going to happen. So we already start attracting people to go for another experience. Uh, yes, when it comes to OG for Poland, this is how it <laughs> looks like more or less. Uh, right now, for the last uh, for the last years, um, the product was uh, sustainably growing, not a lot, but uh, somehow it, we were we are moving forward. Um, so right now, as you can see, when it comes to our conversion um, from applicant to accepted, seventy two percent; from accepted to approved, sixty nine or seventy; approved to realize it's sixty one. Um, and the realization completed it's uh, very low this conversion was uh, taking into consideration uh, this part which this peak of com uh, complete is coming now but it's something that uh, we need to look at because um, otherwise like all the hard work we were paying off uh, will not be reflected in um, in this so um Yes, as, and as you see this year, like we grew by a little bit more than six approvals. Um, so this is not a really uh, big growth, but at, it's good because it means that like the product has uh, has potential and we can do something about it. Um, so <clears throat> when it comes to national performance, like this is how it is. Uh, and when it comes to contribution, and I, I wanted to show you 
uh, like this um, because I want to show you what are the numbers in general we are talking about here. Um, and for as for global volunteer, this uh, to be honest, these are numbers that like we're having, but we uh, we have the potential and we have everything uh, to move to move forward from that. Um, yeah, so this is how it is for now. And next, when it comes uh, to what is going to happen in the next year um, and what we want to focus on. So as you saw, like our conversions are not that bad, but as you saw, like our numbers are maybe not that amazing. Um, I mean, not that amazing, meaning that we can talk about something more uh, more relevant. So this is why uh, in this uh, year um, we are going to focus on mainly um, targeting the right opportunities and uh, focus uh, on targeting the right people in the right markets. Um, with the number of uh, applicants and uh, process time uh, in uh, our strategies there are also a lot of things connected to online uh, infrastructure we want to introduce online payment and also um, take care of the landing page in our online uh, infrastructure that we have this is why um, this is what's going to happen. So the idea is, and I'm going to show you what is the uh, proposal of recommended structure because this will explain to us a lot what how OGV on local level is going to work this year. Uh, I will propose tier three because most of the LCs right now are somewhere around this uh, this thing. So we are going to have team leaders, uh, two team leaders operations and coordinator of experience. What does it mean? It means that uh, we are going to take care of our customers from the moment we attract this person to till the moment this person is approved by team leader or team member in the team of operations um, and after that we are going to have someone responsible to take care of the experience and take care uh, of also uh, the conversion from uh, approved to realize which is something we should uh, focus on a little bit more um, and YTL operations, why we're not going to have uh, marketing separately, why two teams and all these kind of things. So basically the idea is that uh, we are going to focus on specific projects that we want to promote. Understanding our buyer personas, um, we will be able to choose we, what our customers actually need and uh, regarding to this need, we will choose the projects we will promote. We are going to have uh, team leaders specialized in selling specific projects, specific opportunities. Um, who are going to be, let's say, ma little masters of sales. Uh, and this way, if we will have uh, two team leaders, we are able to get to the right market. Because the idea behind this um, is that we want to, uh, because we have limited amount of opportunities we can offer to our customers, but it's, and it's easier to attract people who will be interested in our opportunities, then attract people and then look for opportunities for them. Um, simply it's being mm, more, um, maybe strategic uh, and making sure that like we can actually capitalize on what our customers need and find the right things for them um so that's it uh, from this side uh, next uh, as i already show you this is a timeline and uh, this is the these are the country partners we are going to focus on this year which is italy turkey greece portugal mexico brazil india indonesia and morocco as you can see most of the countries uh, written here are from europe because we want to be as accessible as possible to our customers um, and this is why we want to make sure that everyone will be able to go for like who for, whoever would like to go for a project uh, would have this possibility also by uh, running some contests with uh, our partners and all these kind of things. Uh, I wrote on the right side uh, four measures, uh, which is something that um, for a future LCP and for LCPs in general, it's something uh, pretty important in my opinion to take care of these things. Why? Uh, because first of all, starting with process time, um, it's a measure that tells us a lot about how the product is actually, let's say, healthy in uh, in the uh, in the local committee because it tells us first of all how do we take care about our customers, how are we actually customer centric, but also it tells us how our structures inside of the organizations are working and how um, we are actually we have people who are well educated and like well trained on delivering the process and how they they are doing stuff number of applicants because of course this basically tells us um if what we are proposing to people is actually relevant for them uh, and at the same time if we will not get 
the right number of applicants, we will not get more people to the funnel. So um, we will not we will not do uh, all the exchanges we want to do. Um, then, when it comes to uh, applicants to IR partners, uh, it's all very connected to uh, what I was telling you about this. Uh, um, targeting strategy uh, which basically means that like uh, out of this uh, country partners the opportunities that we are choosing we we should promote this ones because at the end of the day we cannot ensure uh, an amazing um, project everywhere in the world and we can really not send people to 122 countries um, this is unfortunately not true yet um, this is why we need to we need to focus on our country partners then the last uh, measure and uh, the the last and the very important measure is that uh, finish the completed conversion which of course we need to make sure that all the experiences that we do are being finished properly that we deliver the last standard which is the brief of Isaac home but most importantly that our customers make sure that our customers will take the most out of the experience that um, they had they had because like while taking sure and ha having that debrief with them we can make sure that the all the learnings they had that maybe they didn't realize they will realize and they will be able to capitalize on uh, later um yes so when it comes to ogv this was uh, the most important things uh, about the product about what's uh, happening how it is right now and um if you have any questions we're here and um that's it. We're always here for you. You can always contact us uh, and we will be happy to uh, answer all of your questions. Thank you so much. Bye bye.